Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Oil and Gas Technology Centre and our fantastic presentation featuring Asset Integrity. My name is Rebecca Allison, and I'm the Asset Integrity Solution Centre Manager. And there's a few of our team members kicking about as well, Billy and Suzanne. So again, if you've got any questions or want to discuss any projects with us, go and speak to these guys because they're the experts. So Oil and Gas Technology Centre, we're very much industry-focused, industry-led. And we're here to support all aspects of our industry, from the operators to really understand their challenges and get to know what their pain points are and what's keeping them awake at night and helping de-risk the projects for them. So if you are from an operator, asset owner type community, please come and speak to us and tell us what we can do to help you. We're also working with the supply chain. So from small, medium enterprise companies to academia, to the large tier one companies, there is something and an opportunity to work with us. And what we want to know and what we would like to hear from you is what ideas you're currently working on. And that can be the blue sky thinking type ideas, thinking we don't even know if it's going to work, but we need some backing. Or the products that are ready to go into market, but you just need that push to get it into field trials and into the networks within the operators. So helping up, we can help you open the doors to get your product into the marketplace. So that's Oil and Gas Technology Centre, and that's the same philosophy across all the solution centres. So again, if you want to know more about how we can help you, again, speak to any of members of staff around here, and we will happily discuss. So actually looking at asset integrity, one of our main goals is to look at how we can eliminate the impact of asset integrity has on the industry right now. Whether that's through shutdown planning and taking asset integrity out the critical path of shutdowns, reducing the amount of failures that we still continue to have, or even reducing the costs associated with inspection altogether by not doing less inspection, by doing inspection more efficiently. So we have a number of areas we can focus on to help us achieve that goal, but we can only achieve that goal if the industry works together with us. So why do we care about asset integrity? What is the challenge associated with it? It's one of those questions that we can't actually answer right now, but what we do know is a £28 billion problem to the UK alone on managing corrosion. And that's across all industries. So surely, if we can do something to reduce the cost to help our industry, there is a real opportunity to overcome that challenge. What has been really interesting when we've spoken to our operators is say, how much does asset integrity cost you in your budgets on an annual basis? They cannot tell us. They have no idea how much they're spending on asset integrity because it's hidden in so many different budgets. It's in the top sides, the subsea, shutdown planning. Oops. And also in amongst the remedial repairs, the data management, the inefficiencies around about the workforce offshore. So if we don't even know how much we're spending, that again is a real, real challenge. But what we do know is 60% of all failures that we occur in our industry right now are due to CUI. So corrosion under insulation is still a major factor in our industry today and has been for at least 20 to 30 years. And we have made no inroads into fixing that challenge so far. And the other one that we did get some figures on was the cost of vessel and corrosion under insulation inspection is £300 million a year to our industry. That's just for inspection. That's not about the production deferral, the, the work that's required to put in place to open up vessels, the cleaning, scaffolding and all that. Just the actual inspection activity itself costs our industry £300 million a year. So that's all about cost savings. The other interesting point is, I was speaking to the HSE last night, and the number of hydrocarbon releases and the potential for major hydrocarbon releases has not gone down in our industry since Piper Alpha. We are still recording the same amount, if not more, hydrocarbon releases. So regardless of the cost savings, there's a massive, massive safety challenge that we need to look after our people that we send offshore. So it's all very well knowing what the challenges are. There has to be a commercial advantage to actually for companies to develop technology to overcome those challenges. And we've got some figures that we've been working on, but moving from a Not better? Okay, thank you. <laughs> so moving from a non-intrusive inspection regime or to a non-intrusive inspection regime, 
we'll actually save our industry £157 million a year. So that has to have to some commercial advantage to companies to actually help move into that arena. From the work that was done from the OGA and Oil and Gas UK, they have equated that if we can bring new technology to our industry, we can save £700 million a year just on pressure vessel management and CUI management. So again, if we can tap into some of those opportunities, there is a real commercial advantage to bringing new technology into the industry. So also from the work that they did, they actually said to achieve those the £700 million saving, we have to invest £14 million into technology development. That's a huge amount of money that our industry doesn't have to do R&D, but that's where we play the part in. We will bring the funding if you bring us the ideas and the challenges. So what is the future? What can we do? A lot of the technology we've looked at overall in the last year since we've been going has been very much on the fix today. It's about using some of the techniques that we already know about and trying to get them into the market. But that's not going to solve, solve our problems long term. And we now need to think about how do we actually change the future for transform tomorrow? How do we support the basin going forward and maximise economic recovery? And also helping our companies that are based in Aberdeen in the North East to use their skills and export their technologies globally and tap into a global market. We will support all companies in both those initiatives. We're also reaching out to the nuclear and aerospace, but other industries which are getting into trouble again. <laughs> Looking at construction, finance, digital platforms. So industries that we would never think about looking into because corrosion and asset integrity is in all of those industries. So where can we bring those technologies into our industry, but also where can we diversify and put some of those technologies into their industry? But we also need to define what challenge areas, and this is where I am looking for support from our operators, our developers. Where do we focus? You know, we have two big themes, corrosion under insulation and pressure vessels, but what about rotating equipment? Pipelines, subsea. Asset integrity covers a huge range of topics. And the other one that nobody really talks about is asset management and ISO 55000. Where does that fit in in asset integrity? We've just recently conducted a survey with Robert Gordon University and those companies that are using best practice of asset management 55000 have actually had a reported 14% increase in production efficiency. So when people say it's not worth going for accreditation, it's not worth using some of the techniques, well, actually, it does help with production efficiency. And all companies that are using it have all seen an, up, um, an uplift in their production. And then the other things for us is, what can we do to understand the real, real challenges? We still have some major issues around trunnion and pipe support failures, and we don't really have techniques there to manage those effectively. Round up, round up repair methods as well. We are very good at inspecting and finding new technologies. But what do we do when we actually find CUI? How do we actually get new spool replacements out there to find life repairs and how do we manage those? So again, what do we look at the repair methods and certainly around coating and remedial action around blasting and effective repair methods. And the other one that we have seen cropping up quite a lot is pipeline integrity. We have a number of operators that have huge issues with pipelines, which again is a key to keeping our small pools open and not helping tie back to some of our aging infrastructure. And the other big one that we see everybody asking us about is case and conductors, flexible risers. So again, a real big focus on subsea integrity management as well as pipelines and conductors. So it's not just all about top sides. We are looking at everything. So the year to date, because I think it was our birthday yesterday on the 5th of September, we have 14 live projects now underway. And we've invested three million pounds in projects so far. There's a number of the guys that are already we are working with. So track are looking at uh, NTT for composite repairs technique, Infinity Oil Field Services. We're working with them on a uh, actuator safety device, um, which will air control energy. Looking at the new generation of UAVs, which is quite a hot topic at the moment, and then ESERV Dan sitting in the audience as well looking at workflow and maintenance management solutions. I thought I got that wrong. <laughs> and 
And again, working with some other industry partners around Hoist, so support, supporting one of the Hoist GIP projects on CUI. And then we also have industry partners in there with Chevron and Total already signed up and Maersk Oil and a few others coming along the way as well. So we have the industry partners, but we also have the companies as well. And you can see from the range there, we have a, a, a mix of large, small and medium companies working with us. So we can't do this on our own. And I keep saying this and we've been saying this for the last year. But what I want to say and what I want to leave with you guys today is imagine what our oil industry could look like if we can work together to find and overcome our challenges. Imagine what our industry would look like if we can actually make us more competitive and keep the basin going for longer. And imagine what our industry could look like if we had open access to field trials and every operator was eager and keen to support new emerging technologies. Together, all of us can actually achieve that goal and that vision, not just for us, but for the next generation and for the students and the school kids that are still coming through to say, actually, oil and gas and asset integrity is a real career path and a real area for us to actually overcome challenges. So that's my presentation. Hopefully you all heard me with my dodgy mic problems. I would like to open up the floor for discussions. I want to hear what your ideas are, what your thoughts are, and are we focusing on the right areas? Is there something that we should be looking at? Is there something we're missing? Well, over to our audience. Hi, Rebecca. It's Danny Hawthorne from Track. Um, just asking, the projects you have on the go right now, how do you intend to share the, the learnings from them as they, as they come to conclusion? How are you going to do that? So all of our projects and part of our funding, is all information must be in the public domain. So we will share, we will case study the operators that we are working with, we'll put their names to them. We will manage reputational, you know, we don't want to see some, you know, some of these platforms have got some real challenges. So we will be very sensitive on the information we share. But basically we will give everybody open access to the actual results of the technology. We know not everything we will invest in will work. That's the whole point of R&D. But that doesn't mean we say, oh, that didn't work. Let's think about something else to move on. There may be steps to take it back to further development to bring it back to market. So we will share that results as we go through. Even with the Hoist project, which everybody knows Hoist are very much a closed group, the caveat for us actually supporting them, those results will be in the public domain and their members have agreed to that as well. Because it is all about sharing and collaboration, which is always a bit of a buzzword, but actually it's about sharing so people can have commercial advantage as well. Anybody else? So hopefully there's people in the audience that have great ideas that are going to come and speak to us and show us some new projects that we can potentially work on. Rebecca, would it, Rebecca, would it be possible to have a PDF copy of your slide presentation? I believe the presentations are going on to our website and then if anybody, obviously Dave, I will send them through to you, no problem. Thank you very much, Rebecca. <laughs>